So we've been talking this hour about whether it's possible to have empathy for people who have done terrible, evil things. Bloody dictators, mass murderers, serial killers. So let me ask you the same question about someone closer to home, your personal enemy. Because we all have people we don't like, maybe for good reason. But Chuck Klosterman says, maybe you're missing something. I had this incident happen around eighth grade. It was a basketball camp in Fargo, North Dakota. And there was a kid at this camp named Rick Helen who was, at least in our age group, by far the best player. He was physically imposing and more skilled and very talented. But, at least from my perception at that time, an awful person. Maybe the worst person I'd ever met. He was extremely egocentric and he seemed obsessed with sex, which I know is a normal thing for an eighth grader, but I just found it very uncomfortable. And, and, you know, he didn't listen to the coach and he was always arguing with the referees and he was just kind of a bullying figure that really stayed in my mind. I remember him going to high school. He went to different high schools, but he was a good athlete, so his name was in the paper. And then, you know, he ended up becoming a major league baseball player. So I follow this guy's career. I still feel the same way I did in junior high. So like I'm reading the newspaper, hoping to see that Rick Helen got shelled. He wins 20 games one year and I'm just so disappointed. And he pitches in the World Series and I'm just, I'm mad the whole time. Well, I write a piece for Esquire basically about this where I make this passing reference to having this arch enemy. And then he retires, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess end of story. But then I find out, years later, reading an issue of Time magazine in the dentist's office, that Rick Helling, this guy who I'd spent my whole life sort of viewing as the antithesis of me, my arch enemy, was pretty much the first player in Major League Baseball to stand up and take a stand against anabolic steroids. Like, no one listened to him, but he was the first guy to be on record going like, look, this is a problem, it's screwing the game up, and there's going to be consequences if we don't step in. Then, of course, now, in the wake of what has happened, everyone looks back and go like, oh, Rick Helling was this truth pioneer. So I just had to come to the realization that the one person I am on record for hating is probably one of the most important baseball players of the last 40 years, despite the fact that his success on the field was very marginal. His import was that he refused to allow something that was wrong to continue happening without sort of standing up and saying, we need to change this. So, you know, that's kind of my life. Like, the people I hate end up being the heroes. Chuck Klosterman. He's a cultural critic and author, most recently, of X, a highly specific, defiantly incomplete history of the 21st century. 